AI music sucks and I hate everybody involved. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know this is a little bit of a different type of video, but there's kind of a viral moment going on right now that's sort of touching everybody in music, whether you're a casual listener or not. And I just wanted to give my two cents on it because I kind of have a passionate opinion about it and I, I wanted to make that known and get this out um, sort of in video form to you guys. At this point, you've definitely heard about the AI Drake and Weekend song that everyone is like bringing me over and posting on every washed up like algorithm blog. You've got all types of people saying that, you know, this is the end for traditional artists and it's all over because now, you know, we've unlocked this amazing potential to make the worst Drake song you've ever heard over a terrible YouTube type beat. But people are excited this time because a lot of people are like, no way, this song is actually um, good. But the reason this song, I guess, is making the waves is a lot of people really, really enjoy it. And they're excited that, whoa, maybe it's possible to make you know good songs using this AI instead of just sort of silly meme compilations. You're getting all these kinds of articles. You know, this one's from Vice. Viral AI generated Drake song by Ghostwriter has millions of listens. Is it a watershed for AI generated music, a PR stunt or something else? It's something else. And the other thing that it is, is horrible. Obviously I'm getting a bit ahead of myself revealing kind of what my opinion on this whole thing is, but I've got a lot to say about the whole AI thing. And I think we should just dive in um, with the, the best thing we can do to describe kind of this song, which is just listen to it and talk about it. All right, so we've got the song right here, Heart on My Sleeve uh, by Drake AI and The Weeknd AI. Awesome things going on in the world. Okay, so what you've got right here um, is a beat. I don't know if the beat was produced um, by AI. It definitely sounds like it was, but you've basically got um, this this, it doesn't even sound like a stock garage band preset. It actually sounds more like an iPhone recording of like one of those toy pianos or a piano in like the bottom of the church basement that the creator of this like snuck away from Boy Scouts or something to record playing three ascending notes, which is like the first thing you do when you open FL Studio. You tap in all the hi-hats on every two and you literally click do 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 It's just shockingly disrespectful to Metro Boomin to put his tag over this horrific YouTube type beat. You've literally got the most amateurish, the most terrible sounding out of key 808, horrible beat, and you're you're putting another person's name on it, which to me feels even different from the Drake and Weekend thing because it's completely unnecessary to just attach another producer's name to this. It's just gross. But obviously we're only three seconds in, so Drake AI and Weekend AI haven't actually started singing yet. So let's see if they have anything interesting to say. I came out with my ex like Celine, not a flex, eh? Bumping Justin Bieber, but a fever had left. 21, I love him, they're my brother. That's my stat, eh? That, to me, that was strike number two about this obviously being made by a 17-year-old white person in their basement on their RGB Razer Alienware gaming laptop. Just like I said, the ascending piano notes is the first thing you do when you open FL Studio. I'm speaking from personal experience here, but when you are a 14-year-old who just discovered hip-hop and you write your own raps in the back of math class that are about like a troubled guy who's like, you know, letting out his inner demons. The people that like listen to NF never really got through this stage, but their notebooks are full of rap lines where they get to fantasize about saying, Metro made the beat so you know it's gonna slap. Which first of all is unbelievably corny. And if a rapper were to do that, they would never use this language because it sounds God awful. <laughs> So I think the main reason this has gained a lot of popularity is, you know, the flow is serviceable. I'm not even going to call it good. I actually think it kind of sucks, but it, you know, it sounds loosely like Drake. But I think the thing that people are all excited about is that, you know, there's this funny wordplay about Drake and Selena. The rhyme scheme kind of sounds like Drake. But this is where I get confused because I don't know why you would want to listen to AI rap. Like I think electronic or experimental music, maybe, like I can see the argument for it. Okay. I, you know, put in pictures of flowers into an AI that generated, you know, these synth textures, and then I made a song from that. I think that's kind of an interesting use of it. But here you're writing these corny lyrics about Selena and Justin Bieber and pretending it's Drake. I kind of understand this because Drake sometimes does the kind of tongue in cheek references to pop culture. But here it's just strange because as the listener, I know it's AI. So I know it's not Drake talking about Selena and Justin Bieber, which would be, you know, at least moderately interesting because there's a chance that Drake 
has interacted with those people. Instead, I know it's just like a loser in front of his laptop, like me. It loses kind of all the intrigue and all the cleverness or comedy that could have been there because Drake, the person with the potential experience is not writing it. It's just a guy who's been like watching TikTok like the rest of us. I think the interesting thing about this Drake AI thing is if some guy wrote this, everyone rightfully would clown on it because it's bad. Or they would say things like, oh my God, you're so blatantly trying to rip off like a Drake flow and it sounds horrible. But for some reason we give it a pass when it's literally faking. It's like a, it's a step above that level of meat riding onto just complete mockery and wearing a mask. And yet for some reason people are okay with that. I find that extremely alarming. So after this, um, I think the next big piece of like AI news um, was Grimes saying that she's willing to let people use her voice for AI um, as long as there's 50% split royalties. So aside from the fact that I already said that I, I don't understand why you would use someone's voice, automatically knowing it's not that person to me makes the subject matter completely uninteresting. And then also, then it's like, why didn't you just write the song? And I think the same problem is here with this Grimes thing, I don't understand why you would want to listen to fake Grimes when it's probably just going to be a less well-written song just with Grimes' voice on it. If you like listening to Grimes' voice, just listen to Grimes. If you want to listen to bad pop music, trust me, there, there are thousands and thousands of people writing bad versions of Grimes songs. You can just go listen to them. And while I think artists' voices are obviously important, I don't think it necessarily makes up for terrible songwriting. But of course, people were quick to jump on this. So you got this guy, at ArabK24, who made a Grimes cover of a weekend song with her voice. And, you know, maybe I'll get proved wrong, and this is really good, and this is worth it, and Grimes is setting a really good standard. So first of all, he clearly didn't put in enough good data because it sounds nothing like Grimes. Second of all, none of these people know how to, none of these people know how to actually make this music. They're just all running it through the same like .io app. So it puts this horrible reverb on it. It was the same thing in the Drake AI video. I guess I just don't really understand why you would want to listen to this. Because The Weeknd is singing the original song, you know? So half the appeal is that it's The Weeknd song and it's something that he you know, presumably wants to say as a part of his artistic vision. But then when you have someone do a cover, but it's like doing a triple J version or something like that, it adds a unique personal connection because, you know, the artist will do it in their style. And then you as a listener can assume that, wow, Grimes must love this weekend song in a way that I love it. And then that adds kind of some weight to them doing a cover. It adds some type of connection to the song, same way that you can have. And then you might assume there's a connection between these artists. That makes it very exciting. But what this is, is just literally a British version of a singer that you like, input into a song that you like, and it has absolutely no connection. So it's the same as if your friend just did bad karaoke. It's the exact same thing. And you would never listen to that. So why in the world would you listen to this? And the comments, is, is just full of grifters and losers with blue checks. Yo, dude, this is so cool, dope, rocket emojis, sick, bro. It literally reads like a LinkedIn post instead of like an artistic piece on Twitter. You even have Grimes coming in. I feel like this just proves The weekend is iconic. Haha, ha, I am not competing with him here. Yeah, because it's not you, it sucks. Even she is realizing it sucks and she had to backpedal by posting tweets saying, hey, just so you know, please don't write songs where I'm saying I'm having sex with animals and stuff. Obviously that was a whole can of worms I didn't even think of initially, but it actually goes even further than this. This I would say is the most horrifying um, example of this. Got this tweet from Underground Sound. An AI song consisting of Juice World dissing his controversial partner, Ali Lottie, has surfaced. I'm actually not going to play this one. Uh, seek it out if you want, but I think that this one is just absolutely terrible. This, I mean, just this sentence says it all. AI Juice World dissing his controversial partner. Controversial to who? You? Like, your fans who didn't know him? Years after his death, where you're writing, like, weird fan fiction about your dead favorite artist, you know, on their romantic partner, like, years after their passing? I don't know the full extent of the Ali Lada drama. I know that especially with the XXX Tentacion situation, you can argue about uh, the ways that, you know, an estate has honored dead artists and if that's legitimate or not. But it is extremely strange to create this fan fiction world where you get to feel vindicated by putting on a dead person's face 
and voice as a mask to shit on people who are definitely irreparably damaged from, you know, someone they knew in real life um, dying. It, it borders on pornographic to me because it's like you literally can't just let your imagination rock or enjoy the art that's there. It's like you have to see out every fantasy that jumps into your mind with this strange technology. It's just kind of disgusting. To me, I just think it's so much more valuable for someone to suck at making something that they really want to make um, and are passionate about than it is to hide behind a more talented and successful person's likeness and shit all over them by making a demonic technological homunculus version of them sing awful YouTube type beat rap comments tier lyrics. It's terrible and it needs to stop. Another really terrible development, I'm sure you guys have all seen this, um, this guy who did the Kendrick Lamar AI voice filter, this one is... Uh, my voice without the Kendrick Lamar AI voice filter, and... This is my voice with the Kendrick Lamar voice filter. Let it run, DC. Let it run. <laughs> Wish I could go back to the beginning. Are they gonna go and fake a Kendrick? I don't know. They could never capture all my lessons. My just is simply heaven. In case you let get the message, let him pray. Let him pray. God damn, it's like a really, really bad logic song. And the bottom line between all of these is it sounds god awful. The voice sounds horrible. You would never, ever, ever in a million years stream this, ever. It sounds horrible. But unfortunately, this technology is just going to get better. So, you know, put that to the side for a second, put aside the fact that your ears and eyes just bled reading these horrible lyrics and listening to this voice. I mean, this is a white guy, right? So now we're do now we're just actually like gonna do digital blackface. Make black people, real people, real black people sing gentrified rap lyrics from terrible white producers um, from the suburbs of Chicago. There are people that are definitely uh, way better equipped to discuss why this is demented aside from me it brings up you know this activity um from the past but all in all i just think that all of this is terrible there's not one thing about this that makes me excited um and i think that it is just very very strange it just kind of goes back to my video i made a few months ago about how everybody hates art because Genuinely, if you are an artist and someone in your life is is making stuff like this, just know that they hate you literally because the only reason that you would want to listen to AI Drake or a Grimes AI Grimes cover or fake Kendrick Lamar voice is if the only thing you like about music is the name that's attached to the song. You literally like that it says by Drake because he's popular and all your friends say he's good, but there is absolutely no way that you enjoy art, you enjoy a person's music, and you would want to hear a sock puppet version of them sing worse quality music. It's terrible. It has to stop. It, that's it.